I am going to talk about the type of structures in power plant and as I go along you will see that how the power plants are built with a lot of steel in the plants. My talk coverage will be like say what are the structures, I will give you overview that what are the different structures in power plant which are built with steel. Why we choose steel? Because in current competition the cost of the power plants are going every day low and low. So the EPC, we as a EPC company have to have like the cost as well as the performance. So we have to balance that. So what are the criteria we use for selecting the steel structures? I will also share some of the challenges in the plant structures. I will tell you a study which was what we believe is one of the most unique structure we have uh, designed in last uh, three years and I will conclude my session with the concluding remarks. Looking to the structures in power plant you see everywhere you will see steel whether you see boiler, the turbine building, the galleries, the transfer towers, the pipe racks, ESP. So everywhere you will see and each of the structures is loaded with some of the heaviest equipments. If I talk about one wall which is uh, what we call a mainstream wall, it is weighing about 300 ton and th that will be resting on a span of 14 meter. So you can imagine the amount of deflection we have to control. I will take you through the walkthrough of this, the steel plant. Why it is not working? I think the video is not working here otherwise the complete uh, construction I would have shown you the amount of steel that is being used, the number of members and the complete walkthrough of the pipe rack and the TG building. This is about 350 ton uh, uh, meter long building which is weighing about uh, 16,000 ton. Behind you see three different boilers and each of the boiler will be weighing around 12,000 to 14,000 ton. So in a power plant we will be making about 70 to 80,000 ton of steel only in one power plant. Moving ahead, uh, the selection criteria will be primarily the loading on the structure because we will be taking a lot of live loads, equipment loads. That's why the steel is preferred in turbine building, in boiler, in ESP because we have to sustain a lot of large loads of equipment and for the equipment maintenance. The spans are also larger. The turbine building truss will be about 36 meter in span and it is it going to be erected at about 42 meters. So we are going to use steel for that. We need more room for mechanical and electrical services. So as you know, as the competition increases, we have to have like a smaller section and larger room for each and every facility. So if we go by concrete, we will be requiring a lot of room for making the concrete sections. The length of the structures and internal framing. So pipe racks, everything like say we will be make, making like pipe rack which is running about 4 kilometer in a plant and each of the tier will be like say 3.5 to 4 kilometer and such 7 to 8 tiers. So you can imagine the amount of uh, construction work that is being involved. The uh, lot of internal framing is required for supporting the pipes and the cables. So it is not that only one thing will be kept at regular interval but at every 1.5 meter to 3 meter will be requiring lot of supports. Construction time is one of the important aspect for selecting the steel structures and ease of erection. So project schedule makes us take a decision on this. The powerhouse building, I will just show the framing and if you see from the outside the skeletal looks like this but as you go inside you can see lot of complex pipe, piping and electrical framework, lot of equipment, lot of space required for equipment maintenance because we are going to load very very heavy equipment. This is from one of the gas project in US. You can see that everything like what we call HRSG, the boiler, the turbine and the pipe rack, everything was inside one building because it was in a very heavy snow region. What you can see here is a about 33 feet high air filter. I mean you can imagine it is about 11.5 meter high air filter and it was weighing about 250 ton and it is sitting on the frame of this. You can see here the plant, sometimes we have to make it in step. Here you can see one level here and the 25 feet below. So the taller part is on that side and the lighter part is on the this side. So 
any complexity when it comes steel is the solution you can see here partly the steel structure is erected whereas the foundation for other two equipment has ju just ready so after this the this two e uh, equipment will be erected which will be about say 80 feet high and then balance work will be done so ultimately we have to do lot of analysis for uh, making this particular structure stable and you can see here even the sheeting is ready in us the moment things are getting ready they will simply erect the balance parts so here different different analysis were completed and as you see once the product is finished everything is covered with a nice metal cladding i'll just show few pictures of a column base plate i mean some of the base plates in recent power plants we are providing which is of the size of our bedroom it is like a 2.5 meter to 3.5 to 4 meter long and you can see the shear keys which are like say 250 deep 60 mm thick plates another view of the plate i mean man will look very very smaller and as mr venkat was sharing that we have to use this particular girder which is of 2 meter deep made with 50 mm thick plate on the flanges so we and having the limitations of available roll sections we have to go with the built up section you can see in most power plants you will have a rail track which is passing through the turbine building unloading bay because it is carrying lot of transformers and stator and other heavy equipment the rail road is given through this particular unloading bay so you see there is a 12 meter frame through which this is passing you can see the cranes one of the heaviest load on the turbine building is the crane here what you can see is a double girder tandem operating crane which was supposed to erect a stator of 400 ton so crane capacity is range from 100 ton to 350 ton we have done a project where there was a single crane with 350 ton you see the heater bay and you will see lot of levels at very very smaller depths or the story heights and we we have to have lot of equipments inside this and the interfed water piping you can see the naked frame of this what are the challenges we face in normal powerhouse building the lens each unit you will see between 90 to 125 meter and such 2 3 4 5 units will be there if you go to the ultra mega power plant there are five units so you will see a half a kilometer long turbine building so there will be expansion joint at every 125 meter or so the widths from th i mean currently uh, the widths are in the range of 36 meter heater base are of 12 to 14 meter height 36 to 42 meter column spacing ranges between 7.5 to 12 meter and column i already said the biggest challenge for structural engineer is basically the irregular mass and stiffness distribution you will see a deerator which is resting on a smaller bay which is weighing 400 ton and on the other side exactly the opposite side you have nothing so to cater to the, uh, this type of structures in a heavy earthquake region we have to do lot of analysis use those data for complex analysis the biggest challenge for us in the long direction is limited bracing way because lot of mnd services are being passed we are given only two bays in a 120 meter long building so transferring lateral load either from the earthquake or from the wind quite complex crane i said one of the biggest load which is given into the power plant structures you can see the vertical loads of a piping in the range of 20 ton lot many places but more, very critically the lateral loads currently in the super critical project where the temperature ranges are 595 degree at 250 bar pressure the lateral loads at at least 10 locations will not be less than 60 ton so you will have a structure loaded with 600 ton lateral load and that is why you see the column sizes the base plates will be very very heavy the superimposed loads i mean the building industry will be using 2.5 kn to 3 kn per meter square loading 5 kn per meter square for like say very populated but here the loading starts at 7.5 and in the unloading bay and uh, unloading areas it goes as high as 3.5 ton per meter square so the floor has to be designed for such a huge load obviously we cannot have i mean concrete for this type of structures so each building as i said will be about 5000 ton so three building will make 16000 ton or 15000 ton i think i 
just open the videos because now it is all videos. Let me straight away go to the one of the video which I wanted to show and look at the magnitude of steel being used. Okay, so we are landing into the turbine building and as we go along we are entering inside the turbine hall and you will see the complete 36 meter bay and you see steel everywhere. Lot of joists are there to support the floor equipment, lot of maintenance areas. So whatever the handles are there, there are the access paths and look at the column sections, lot of stiffener plates, inside plates. To transfer the lateral load we keep lot of long trusses, 30 meter trusses in plan. Now we are entering into the pipe rack zone and you will see the pipe rack will be uh, 4 to 6 tiers. And also observe the length, each of this rack will be not less than 1 kilometer. lot of brackets will be there for supporting smaller piping and you see to cater the needs for the deflection and economy we make lot of trust towers. So this was the glimpse of uh, steel used in power plant structures. Now I will show you the model development that how many models we make actually as an engineering effort you will see that this many stared models or any analytical models will be created. So you can imagine the amount of stuff as many as 35 to 40 engineers have to work on each power plant project only from the structural side. And let me tell you these projects are designed for like say 3 years, it has to start in 3 years but the engineering goes up to 30 months or 32 months, so you do not complete, I mean it usually takes 48 to 50 months to complete the project. Now I will take one of the structure which was a very challenging structure what we had and this particular video will tell what was the challenge. The challenge was to provide a conveyor gallery at an elevation of 79 meter. The constant here was that we had to provide a conveyor gallery between two boilers and you see the unit 1 and unit 2 and the conveyor was passing from the right side to the next boiler to feed the coal. So we had to have a 68.1 meter span gallery. Obviously we thought the first option was provide the gallery between two boilers on the end columns. But this is a bad choice, why? Because each boiler will behave differently under lateral load and it will make this gallery unstable. So we did not want to go with this. The bottleneck here was you, you, you must have observed that there is a control building below and it has to come at the right position because we do not have space on this side or on this side. So you cannot have a common column between the control building and the gallery. Okay, why? Because when the some vibration will be there at a higher level, it will also shake the control building and control building being uh, uh, housing a lot, lot of electronic equipment, we did not want it to have any constant shaking of those areas. Ultimately we propose this that how to create two legged towers and we wanted to make a table and provide a PTFE bearing at end of the boiler. And the deflection for which PTFE was designed was about 150 millimeter. So we were allowing 150 millimeter enter gallery to move in independent directions. So this is how the concept was developed and you see here there are only two sticks for the column, no four legged tower or transfer tower. So ultimately concept was made like that. This was our dream, now how to make it reality. Okay. So it was very very challenging for us to convince our client. So we created an animated video and we showed first to them and then there was a buy in from the fabricator and the erector. Okay. Yeah. So you can see here we created a complete erection sequence. Okay. This is how the entire fabrication will be done and you see each of this column is 1500 square column made with 50 mm plate and lot of diaphragm plates inside. 
we were skeptical that whether fabricator will be able to do this job or not. So I personally visited site, talked to the welder, not to the welding inspectors or the foremen or their supervisors. But I had to talk to welder that what way you are going to make this particular column. And you see, this particular scheme was explained to the erector and ultimately it was made into reality. I will also show the video of how it was erected. And this is the actual sequence, you will see one of the truss is being erected by two numbers, 600 ton crane. And you can imagine the boom height is about 85 meter. Okay. So, partly the bracings were erected, these four columns, each of the column, as I said, 1.5 meter box was completed. So, let me just summarize now how it has. So, I have just showed this and some of the pictures of other plant area, you will see the bunkers. Each of these six bunkers will be weighing about 2000 ton coal and such 18 bunkers will be there in each of the power plant. You will see the size of the man with respect to this. This is a 10.5 meter diameter bunker. Some of the tall structures like say coal conveyor galleries, conveyors, boiler area and AHP. Concluding remarks, they are quite uncommon, very large sizes are there, lot of large loading. This structure requires a lot of control over models because as it, it, it is not one time activity. Once you start a TG building or a pipe rack, it has to continue for 18 to 20 months because every day there will be changing in piping load or uh, relocation of some equipment or something like that. Schedules are always stringent. Nowadays, we are being forced to do entire civil and structural engineering for a power plant in 12 to 14 months, which is, which was like said 36 to 40 months, 10 years back. So we will require a lot of processes, automation, standardization, and this is how we, even for the optimization of steel beams and columns, we have automated programs in house because the current state of the art software is like STAD or SAP, they are not conducive to make us economical designs. So, a lot of automation effort is being put on our company. And we also give a lot of priority to erection ease because we have to have a discussion on constructability with our fabricator and erector. So, in power we do it all and thank you very much.